So what exactly is atmospheric carbon dioxide? There is a fixed amount of carbon on Earth stuck somewhere in the carbon cycle where carbon is stored in living things and in the Earth. The carbon that is released by respiration of living things is atmospheric carbon dioxide. What is global net primary productivity, also referred to as NPP? A shortened definition of NPP is how much carbon dioxide is taken in for photosynthesis minus the amount of carbon dioxide these photosynthesizing organisms release in respiration. This slide shows the global NPP on land from February 2010 to September 2012. The dark green areas show the high levels of NPP. You can see that NPP is the highest at the equator where there is the most direct sun in plant life. And there are some factors that can influence the NPP. The first one is sunlight. As you can see in the global NPP distribution graph shown before, in the tropic area where the sunlight is most sufficient, NPP is the highest. The second factor is seasonal variation. In mid-latitudes, productivity is obviously tied to seasonal change, with productivity peaking in each hemisphere summer. The third one, human activity. Logging, urbanization can cause an evident decrease in NPP. Uh, the fourth one, moisture. Increase of moisture causes the increase of NPP. And the last one is nutrients. When we think that the richer the nutrients in the soil, soil are, the higher NPP will be. But under elevated CO2 level, it is not always true. Now let us take a close look at one of the research, decking lung soil nitrogen constraint on the CO2, fertilization of plant biomass. In the experiment conducted, the researchers established 296 field plots planted with perennial grassland species under ambient and enriched nitrogen supply at same elevated atmospheric CO2 level. The first three year result shows that ambient nitrogen plots actually have higher solenite nitrogen ma mineralization while the later 10 years results are quite the opposite, showing that enriched nitrogen plots have higher solenite nitrogen mineralization. This difference in results, as explained by the researchers, is the result of two sets of mechanisms. One is that under elevated CO2 level, Higher carbon to nitrogen ratios in life and dead plants slow rates of decomposition and promote nitrogen immobilization, leading to lower rates of nitrogen cycling. Another is that increased inputs of liable carbon to soils caused by elevated CO2 stimulates net nitrogen and hence plant nitrogen supply over time. Both of these processes occur uh, at the same time but to different degrees among ecosystems, leading to the large variability in observed response of nitrogen supply to elevated CO2. How does carbon dioxide affect NPP? Plant growth and NPP depend on the balance of carbon gain through photosynthesis and carbon loss through respiration. Plants capture solar energy through photosynthesis, which plants convert carbon dioxide in the air into sugar molecules they use for food. In the process of making their food, plants also provide the oxygen we need to breathe. The plants provide the energy and the air required by the most life forms on Earth. The carbon dioxide underground becomes part of the roots, leaves, stalks, or tree trunks, and the soil. An experiment done by UC Santa Cruz was done to study the effect of CO2 on MPP. In this experiment, two sunflowers were planted in eco-cells and studied with different CO2 levels. Eco cells are a bunch of environmentally controlled, naturally lit, open flow systems at the mesocosm scale. Two eco cells were used in the experiment, one under ambient atmospheric CO2 levels and the other under elevated CO2 levels. 
The purpose of the experiment was to study the effect of elevated CO2 on photosynthesis and respiration and to see whether MPP increases in proportion to the total increase in photosynthesis. The sunflowers were planted in both soils and grown for 53 days under the same temperature, humidity, soil, and moisture conditions. The sunflowers were chosen because they have a typical response to CO2, they represent a common C3 plant, and they allow for measurement underground CO2. As you can see according to the graph, the plant with the CO2 treatment that had a higher uh, increase in CO2 had a higher daily MPP, total photo photosynthesis, and respiration. The changes in GPP and MPP took logistic curve models. The max daily GPP and MPP, as you can see, occurred approximately 43 days after planting. So, thus, higher CO2 results in a higher MPP and higher total photosynthesis and respiration. This proved the point that CO2 does affect MPP. So what is the implication of this on the human population? This graph from a previous study in Australia showed the relationship between NPP and human population density. The y-axis is the square root of human population density and the x-axis is the log base 10 NPP. It was determined that as the NPP increases, the human population density increases too. Because of this correlation, the NPP is affecting the carrying capacity of human population. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of species that a habitat can support. The global NPP constrains the carrying capacity of the human population. The reason of global NPP being so important is because it acts as the food source, fibers, and fuels for humans. If there is a lack of these resources, the human population simply cannot grow. It has been calculated that, prior to human impact, NPP was about 150 million tons of organic matter per year. When the human population was 6 million, by deforestation and other usage, humans have already appropriated about 40% of the terrestrial NPP. From that data, people might think that the carrying capacity of human population will be about 6 times 100 over 40, which is equal to 50 million. However, this is not true because humans can't use up all the NPP because the NPP is also needed by other living organisms. Furthermore, some NPP is not harvestable, such as the roots of the plants. Therefore, the real carrying capacity of human population would be much lower, and we are going to reach it soon. Our take-home message is, to support the human population in the future, we should conserve and utilize the available NPP. This is our work cited. Thank you.